Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at two examples of finding the domain of some functions. So just as a reminder, the big thing that we're wanting to make sure does not happen is that we have negatives under square roots or zeros in the denominator. So that's gonna be the driving force as we calculate these domains. So notice, in this case, we're gonna need x, 6x minus two to be bigger than or equal to zero because 6x minus two is under a square root and we're gonna need four minus the square root of 6x minus 2 to be not equal to 0. Okay, good. So now let's work on these two conditions until we can come up with the domain. So here, this is going to give us 6x has to be bigger than or equal to 2, which tells us x needs to be bigger than or equal to 2 over 6, which is 1 third. Okay, so we've reduced this down to a very simple condition. x has to be bigger than or equal to 1 third. Okay, great, now let's look at this one. So what we'll do here is we'll subtract um, four from both sides, so that gives us negative six x minus two under the square root, that has to be not equal to negative four. Good, now we can square both sides and that gives us six x minus two is not allowed to be 16. Good, but now we can add two to both sides, so that gives us six x is not allowed to be 18. In other words, x is not allowed to be three, which we get from uh, dividing both sides by six. Okay, so now let's graph that on the path to writing the domain in interval notation. So notice we'll put one third over here because that's uh, one of the important points and we'll put three over here because that's another important point. We're going to put a little bubble around three because we're not allowed to include that and then we want everything to the right of one third including one third so we'll put a solid dot there and now we graph everything to the right but we have to skip over this negative three. Great, now we've got a graph of this and we can write down it, the domain and in interval notation. So notice we include one third up to three, not including three, union three to infinity. Good, so there we've got the domain of this function. So now let's move on to this next one. So this one looks a little complicated. Notice we've got denominators within the de denominators. We're gonna have to take that into account as we calculate the domain. So notice we're gonna need nine minus one over x plus two squared. We're gonna need that to be not equal to zero because that's the like, uh, because that's like the first denominator. And then we're also gonna need x plus two squared to be not equal to zero because that's the inner denominator. Good, so now let's solve each of these. So in this case, we get one over x plus two squared equals nine, but not equals nine. So what did I do? I added this one over x plus two squared to both sides of the equation. Good, now I can flip both sides of the equation to get x plus two squared is not equal to one over nine. Great, now we can take the square root so we get x plus two is not equal to plus or minus one over three because the square root of one over nine is one over three. Great, and now we can subtract two from both sides of the equation, and notice that's gonna give us x is not equal to uh, negative two minus one over three, or x is not equal to uh, negative two plus one over root, sorry, one over three, and I should have an and there. Good, so now let's put those into more familiar numbers. So this means x is not equal to, so we can look at that as negative six over six. So this is gonna be minus seven, sorry, we can look at that as minus six over three, so that's minus seven over three, and x is not equal to, so that's gonna be minus five over three. Great, so now we've got two conditions from this first bit. Good, so now let's look at conditions from the second bit so we can take the square root of both sides here and we get x plus two is not equal to zero, which means x is not equal to negative two. So there's our next condition. So now let's go ahead and graph these conditions on the number line and then we'll get an interval. So let's take our number line. So the important points on the number line are as follows. So notice we have minus seven over three, minus two, uh, minus five over three. 
So those are in that order. And we're not allowed to include any of those, but we are allowed to include any other number. So that means we can shade the rest of the number line. So we get that. And now putting that into interval notation, we get minus infinity to minus 7 over 3, union minus 7 over 3 to 2, union 2, negative 2 to negative 5 over 3, union negative 5 over 3 to infinity. Good. And that's the end of the problem.